Hey guys, welcome back to The Fool's Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate those. Man, <laughs> I just got to talk about the NFL playoffs. Oh my, what a game that just wrapped up. Kansas City beat Buffalo 42-36 in overtime. This game was epic anyways, but then it, it's, it was just the offenses just throwing haymakers back and forth at each other. It's like hardly any punts, no turnovers. It was such a well-executed game. And then we got to the final two minutes. I mean, you can just start from the beginning, like the rushing yards by the quarterbacks. I would love to know when's the last time both quarterbacks led their team in rushing. I mean, I, I, it's crazy. So, I mean, Allen and Mahomes led their teams in rushing. It was just such an epically great game. And I was really thinking this game would be the best of the weekend, and honestly, it was. But, man, what a weekend of football. Three games decided by by field goals to win the game, all road teams. And then this is the nightcap. And what a game. Like I said, epic game anyways. But then you go to the fourth quarter, under two minutes. You have Davis gets his, I think it was his third touchdown you know, for Buffalo to go up. They get a two-point conversion to Diggs. Now they're up by, you know, a few points. Mahomes comes back, hits Tyreek Hill. 60-some yard touchdowns, this awesome like go route or like, inside slant and go, and he's so fast you can't catch him. Buffalo comes back, hits uh, Davis again for a touchdown with 13 seconds left. You're thinking this, okay, that's it, that's it. There's no way they can get back. Ah, uh, Patrick Mahomes. Suddenly, Buffalo played kind of dumb and didn't really execute the last bit. Don't get me wrong. I mean, give credit to Kansas City. They really probably should have been in a, like, you know, more of a cover prevent thing. It is what it is. It's hard to judge that. But when you have three timeouts, you can see how quickly you can move a ball, right? So Kansas City doesn't even have to take a long field goal. They get in two good plays there, one to Kelsey to set it up. And now Buckner hits his field goal. Now we go to overtime. Just crazy. There were 25 points in the last two minutes of this game. And it just felt, I mean, it just felt totally that. Whoever won the coin flip, their offense is just going to come down and score because no defense was getting stops. The defense were t were totally tired, totally gassed out. Definitely you could see that um, the injury to Tyrone Matthew at the very beginning of the game totally played a big part in this in the second half where the Buffalo offense, Josh Allen, were just shredding the Kansas City secondary. Definitely Matthew there I think would have helped a little bit, but that's what it is. Injuries happen. Kansas City gets the ball back in overtime. They go down the field, and boom, they hit Kelsey in the end zone. Game over. Win 42-36. Just what a game. I mean, the stats here are just crazy. Mahomes, 378 yards, three touchdowns. Allen, 329 yards, four touchdowns. He is just crazy. What a game. I mean, it, this... <laughs> Just the back and forth nature made it such a great game too because it, this was a classic punch counter punch game, right? It wasn't quite like the Tampa Bay uh, Ram game today where the Rams just went out to a huge lead and then Tampa Bay came back and tied it, right? And then uh, Rams won it. It was punch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I really got to feel pro well good for Buckner that he gets that game winning kick and. Kansas City wins. I, I had really no rooting interest in it. Um, so it was just, I enjoyed watching the good game. But special teams, man. Buckner missed the extra point. He missed a field goal. So, man, if they lost that game, he was going to be the, the scapegoat of this. Rightly so, too. But he makes the kick to send it to overtime. What a game. I mean, that, that's the nightcap. I mean, what can you say about it? just two offensive teams that just... I, but that's the thing, both teams were supposed to be good at defense, it just didn't matter. This is the classic example of a good offense beats a good defense, and that's what it was. It was just the offense was so good that the defense couldn't do anything about it. Just crazy. What a fun game. Oh, I, I don't know if this is the best football game I've ever seen, I don't know. Um, just crazy. It was very, very good. I mean, you just got to flip this, just think about this. Last week, I mean, I did a video where four of the six games were complete blowouts. This weekend, all four games were just epic one-score games. So, I mean, just what a complete change from last week's games. 
Now, I also want to give a few thoughts on Tampa Bay versus uh, Los Angeles Rams. And, again, the Rams win 30-27. to 27. And I just got to say here, it was like a tale of two halves. <laughs> the Rams just came out and just stomped all over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucs couldn't do anything. Tom Brady had no time. His makeshift offensive line battling injuries couldn't give him any time. And you could see the best quarterback can't do anything without time, right? They need time. And so it was <laughs> it was 20-3. to Brady had a pick there. It looked like it was going to be 27-3. to and a big play in this game, the fumble at like the one yard line. Los Angeles Rams are like going to go in for another touchdown, most likely, at least a field goal. Instead, they get the turnover. And boy, the turnovers really hurt the Rams. They're fortunate that they got this win. The Rams ended up fumbling the ball and losing four fumbles in this game. Four fumbles. And that just is what you can't do if you want to beat a team. And so the fumbles, the turnovers started mounting and the Bucks started getting some points here, started a field goal there, a touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. All of a sudden, Tom Brady has brought the team back. And it's crazy. It's 27-27. And then 40-some seconds, I think, left to go, and Stafford gets sacked on the first play. And a lot of teams probably would have been like, okay, okay, fine, settle down, let's go to overtime, regroup, and maybe win the coin toss right and go. Sean McVay didn't do that, and Matthew Stafford didn't do it either, for that matter. I mean, McVay called the plays, but still Stafford could have checked down. He could have done different plays. No, he goes to the all-pro Cooper Cup, who won as the, the triple crown, right? Most catches, most yards, most touchdowns. And he hits them on a nice out route, I think, first for a first down. And the next play... I, he hits him, Stafford hits him, but what on earth was Tampa Bay playing on defense? They decide to do a slot blitz, which leaves Cooper Cup on a go route, basically, against your safety. Totally terrible. Time is your friend here. What on earth was Tampa Bay doing with that defense? It was completely foolish. What a dumb defense to do. And it completely bit them. Don't get me wrong, Stafford still had to see it and had to hit Cooper Cup. But what on earth are you doing playing that? A blitz from there to leave your safety one-on-one -on -one with the wide receiver, let alone the best wide receiver they have. That was just silliness. And it burned them. And honestly, that was just inexplicable that they played that defense when there was only a few, like 20, side, 20 seconds left or something in the game. Not, not much, right? And no timeouts. What on earth are you playing that type of an aggressive defense? Play a, high, play a double shell of some kind, you know, two safeties high. Make them throw underneath you and, you know, come up and make a tackle of anything. Or, you know, make them check it down and get a 5-10 yard pass and out of bounds instead of that. That was just a big, big mistake by Tampa Bay. And really, Tampa Bay was shooting them, themselves in the foot all game. They had three penalties, uh, 15 yarders that really hurt throughout the game, Not did not... Uh, Sue had one, Brady had one, and another one had a penalty there throwing his helmet. And really, you think, oh, it was after that big play to Cooper Cup for the big 75-yard touchdown, I think it was, on third and 20. And like, oh, whatever, that didn't matter. Oh, it did. Because what it did was then, boom, L.A. was up closer. They could pooch kick it. That pinned the Tampa Bay inside their own 15. And that means you can't do much of your offense when you're pinned so much. And that just kept going. And they just played dumb. They played really dumb for the first half, especially. Special teams really hurt them, too. Just like, you know, every game. But this game, they had their kicker missed a uh, field goal. And, you know, they're either, I'm not sure if it's the same kicker or not, but he had the two kickoffs that went out of bounds. So here, instead of getting the ball at the 25, you're taking it at the 40. I mean, that's just dumb. You can't do that. This And it happened twice. Those silly mistakes by Tampa Bay really hurt them in this game. It just really, you know, they, they were fortunate to be even in this game. And, you know, L.A. Rams were fortunate, too, that Tampa Bay played such dumb defense on the last drive. But it is what it is. Whew. Two football games, two really good football games. Definitely like the night game better. I like the back and forth, back and forth, punch, counter punch versus 
a team gets out to a big lead, and can the other team in this game, Tampa Bay, fight back? Also, I am I'm a Tom Brady fan, right? Michigan, right? Don't get me wrong. But it was kind of cool seeing Stafford get the win, too. He made some those last two great throws. He played a really good game. He's not the one that fumbled four times. And so, as a Lions fan, just by geography, right, I live in Michigan, it's nice to see him go to a team and be on a winner. Because, you know, he's been on junk teams in Detroit for so many years. It's nice to see that he can win games. When you put talent around him, he can win games. So it's kind of nice that way. Because, you know, I, I, that's kind of, in my mind, nice to see players leave Detroit and go win. I mean, I have nothing against Stafford wanting to do that. I wish Kelvin Johnson would have gone to another team and won a title. I wish he would have gone to, like, New England or something. But it's nice. You know, nothing against uh, Stafford. So kind of cool. The, you know, so it is what it is. Lots of thoughts. Crazy great football games. What a weekend of football. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts. Put them in the comments below and I'll try to respond. And I'm totally so much to talk about, but I don't want to, you know, talk on here for 20 minutes or anything. <laughs> hey, I do appre you, appreciate you guys watching. And if you do have comments, put them in the box below. And until I see you guys next time, well, tomorrow, it's getting late, I'll do a video on Michigan versus... Uh, Indiana, the basketball game, big win by Michigan, and I'll do a little recap. I got a request from a fan to do some little Red Wing video, so I'll do a video, kind of a weekly recap of the Wings games and such, and we'll see how that goes. So, long story short, thanks for watching, and until I see you guys next time, always go blue!